day of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital. Where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Come in. Outrageous. That's what it is. Outrageous. Ridiculous. Hmm? I have too much to do to waste a lot of time with some ridiculous woman with a cold and a nose. What on earth are you mumbling about, Dr. Gillespie? I'm mumbling about Dr. Carew. That's what I'm mumbling about. <laughs> well, I, I grant you he's an old auntie about some things, but uh, it can hardly be called a woman with a cold in her nose. Well, who said he could? You did. Oh, you're crazy, Kilday. <laughs> you ought to know you've been a diagnostician for a good many more years than I have. Now, look here. I'm not in any mood for bantering. I'm busy, and that fool Carew has gone out of town, and he left a letter for me asking me to see this fool woman with the sniffles. Now, do you know she's a fool woman with the sniffles? Have you seen her yet? No, I haven't, but I can tell from the tone of Carew's letter. He says she's a new member of the board of trustees, and he wants me to be very nice to her. Dr. Leonard Gillespie, boy diplomat. Ah, go to blazes. I should have known better than to come to you for help. How can I help you in a case like this? Well, I thought you could see the old crow with me and kind of help me out. I'd I'd do it for you, Kildare. (laughs) I have never refused a fellow man in need. What is it? Are you afraid of this, uh, this, uh, what's her name? M- Millicent Forbes, that's oh. her name. You're doggone right I'm afraid of her. I'm afraid of any woman that Carew wants me to be nice to. I had a hunch this was where you were. Okay, 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 you were right. Now that you found me, go away and forget that you did. My, my, what a bright, sunshiny face we have this morning. Yeah. Dr. Gillespie is not in one of his better moods. Uh. There's a lady in your office asking to see you. Oh, Sprout. Well, send the lady down to my office, will you, Molly? She says she's a friend of Dr. Carew's and a member of the board of... All right, Molly, all right, all right. All right. I'm not interested in her biography. Just send her down. Yes, Dr. Gillespie. Immediately, Dr. Gillespie. Goodbye. Whatever you say, Dr. Gillespie. I'm sure I don't know why you should be afraid of this woman. You should see some of the women Dr. Carew sent to see me. He came in on broomsticks. I see. Well, we'll examine this one. Give her some cold capsules or something and the quick heave hole. Yeah. Nicely, of course, in the best Carew manner. Yeah. Come in. Well, hello. Oh, hello. Mrs. Forbes? Why, yes. Uh, that is, it, it's Miss Forbes. Oh, well, I'm Dr. Kildare. This is Dr. Gillespie. Uh, how do you do, Dr. Gillespie? Well, I was told you were the most handsome doctor in New York, and I can certainly see why. <laughs> yes, Dr. Gillespie is definitely the Clark Gable of Blair General Hospital. Uh, yes, I can see that. Uh, 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 won't you sit down, Miss uh, Forbes? Oh, I wish you'd call me Millicent. 
Huh? I've never heard Dr. Carew call you anything but Leonard, and I do hope you won't mind if I call you that. <laughs> you see, I feel as though I know you already. Uh, of course. <coughs> Millicent. <laughs> <laughs> there, you see, we're friends already. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Kildare, I, I don't think we'll need you. Oh, Dr. Gillespie, you forget that I was called in as a consultant on this case. Well, I, I think I can hand it along, all Dr. right. Dr. Carew insisted that Miss Forbes have every attention possible. Oh, isn't that charming? <laughs> He's such a sweet man, sweet. Oh, let's see, you're suffering from a cold, Miss Forbes? Uh, yes, yes, it's just a nasty old case of the sniffles, really. But Dr. Carew said that since I was on the board of trustees and all that, I shouldn't take any chances. Well, I should think not. Well, if you'll just open your mouth and say, ah, Miss Forbes, I'd like to look at your throat. Why, of course. I'd be happy to. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. A slight inflammation. Uh, let me see. Uh, mm. oh. Uh, yeah. oh, you have such strong hands, mm. Dr. Gillespie. <laughs> oh, Gesundheit. Yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'll take your temperature, Miss Forbes. Just slip this under your tongue, please. That's right. <laughs> You must not talk for three minutes. Uh, I understand. Shh. Now, don't you worry, Millicent. Don't you worry. We'll have you all fixed up in no time. We can't have a lovely woman like you ill for one single moment. Do you think we should hospitalize Miss Forbes, Dr. Gillespie? Well, we'll have to see what her temperature is. It's a long-distance call for you, Dr. Kildare. Oh, thanks, Molly. Hello. Oh, hello, Dr. Carew. Yes, I'll be glad to help you in any way I can. What is it? Miss Forbes. Hmm? Why, she's in my office right now. Dr. Gillespie called me in for a consultation himself. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, her condition seems to be very favorable. Huh? Yes, we are giving her every possible attention. Yeah. Goodbye. That was Dr. Carew phoning from Albany, Miss Forbes. He wanted to be sure that we were doing everything possible for you. Uh, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. I'll take out that thermometer. Oh, how sweet of Dr. Carew. Mm. Uh, your temperature is normal, Miss uh, 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 Millicent. Oh, thank you, Leonard. <laughs> oh, suffering microbes. Oh, my goodness. What was the matter with her? Oh, of course, of course, she's jealous. <laughs> My, you see the effect you have on women, Dr. Gillespie? Uh, I don't think that I... Now, now, don't be uh, modest, uh, Leonard. Yes, he is modest. Why, anyone can look at him and see that he's just a big, shy schoolboy at heart. Uh, uh, don't you agree, Dr. Kildare? Well, perhaps I don't have your insight, Miss uh, Forbes. Now, I'll tell you how I'm going to prescribe for you, if it meets with Dr. Gillespie's approval, of course. Yes. Yeah. I'd like you to take one coracetin pill every three hours. Your mm-hmm. cold is in the very early stages, and I think we can get rid of it for you before it gets too uncomfortable. Yes, you, you want to eat a light dinner tonight. Oh, um, why don't you come along and have dinner at my home, Dr. Gillespie? Or are you too busy? Well, now, let's see. I was on duty tonight, but Dr. Kildare could look after my cases. Well, I'll... Uh... Yeah, you, you will, Kildare. Yes, 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 to be sure. Well, uh, uh, Miss Forbes, uh, 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 Millicent... <laughs> I think that's a very nice suggestion. But I insist on taking you out to dinner. Oh, oh, how exciting. <laughs> well, I'll run along home and dress. Oh, well, now, what time will you pick me up? Oh, about seven. I'll be waiting. Uh-huh. Uh, you have my address on my card. Well. Uh, goodbye. Oh, thank you, Dr. Kildare. You've been so charming. Don't mention it. Uh, I'll see you at seven, uh-huh. Leonard. Well, we certainly gave her some cold capsules and a quick heave-ho, didn't we? Yeah, attractive woman, isn't she? Maybe I should go along with you. Oh, you? No, you don't. No, you don't. You're staying right here at Blair General. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, a very attractive woman. <laughs> Oh, oh! I just came down here to turn off your office light, Dr. Kildare. What are you doing up? Mm. Oh, I just thought I'd sit up and keep a candle burning in the window. They had dinner at the club and team. How do you know? One of the ambulance drivers saw them going in. Mm. Then they went dancing at the Waldorf roof. How do you know that? One of the trained nurses over there phoned me. She rode up in the elevator with them. I suppose he had lobster Newburgh for dinner again. He did. Well, I'd better get out the bicarbonate of soda. Dr. Kildare, do you think she's so attractive? Mm, She's not nearly as attractive as you, Molly. Oh, you. 
Uh, men never fall for women that act intelligent. And I never had time to learn to act dumb. I can get very tiresome. Yeah, but by the time a man finds it out, he's usually been married a few years. Now, don't you worry about Millicent Forbes. She hasn't got a brain in her head. Listen to me. The smarter they are, the dumber they act. Don't you kid yourself. I've been a woman long enough to know that. He'll probably marry her. Oh, I doubt if she's asked him yet. <laughs> I always knew somebody would get their hooks into him someday. Oh, Molly, don't give up the ship. She'll probably make him very happy. She's probably just the sort of wife he should have. Look, they only went out to dinner. Just because they went out to dinner doesn't mean... That's the way these things start. Hmm? Two people go out to dinner, and the next thing you know, they're getting married. Oh, Molly, you have too much common sense to think. I have plenty of common sense, but he hasn't any. No, no, it's all right. Let him marry her. I can take it. I've been expecting this for years. But he only met the woman today. I'm sure I hope they'll be very happy. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh, I think I hear Casanova's footsteps. Now, mop your eyes, Molly. You don't want him to see you crying, do you? Crying? My goodness, who's crying? Well, what's everybody doing up? Nothing. And if you think we're waiting up for you, you're crazy. Absolutely. Why, I never thought for a moment that you two... And I'm sure I hope you and Miss Forbes will be very happy. Good night. What's the matter with her? Have a nice evening. Uh, very quiet. What did you do? Oh, we had a little dinner, quiet little dinner, you know, in a neighborhood restaurant. That was all. Mm-hmm. Where's the bicarbonate of soda? Right there on my desk. Ah. How's Miss Forbes? Oh, fine, fine. I think I'll have her come into the hospital, though, for a few days tomorrow. What for? If she's fine. Well, a little checkup never does any harm, you know. Crew wanted us to be nice to her. Well, I'll be doggone. Yeah? Well, what's the matter with you? Evidently, Molly was right. Molly was right about what? Look here. You don't want to be taken in by this woman. Taken in? What are you talking about? Well, now, a woman like this may seem dumb, but they're smarter than they seem. Seem dumb? Millicent is an extremely intelligent woman. That's my whole point. And for you to get involved... Kill there. Uh... Are you by any chance laboring under the impression that you are one or the other of my parents? No, no, but... Are you laboring under the impression that I can't take care of myself? Well, I didn't mean to imply exactly that. No, No man is going to lead me around by the hand, you know. I'm not afraid of a man leading you around by the hand as much as I'm afraid of a woman leading you around by the nose. What woman? You know what woman. Look here, I just went to dinner with Millicent Ford. Forbes, that's all. I know. But that's the way these things always start. Two people go to dinner and, and end up married. Ah, you're out of your mind. I'm not going to end up married to anyone. You talk like I'm a little child married. That's ridiculous. Look here, Kildare. You take care of your life and I'll take care of mine. All right, if that's the way you feel about it, all right. Good night, no. Dr. Kildare. And good night, you, you wolf. Molly, that's the nicest thing you ever said to me. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Look what it says here in the columns, Dr. Kildare. Mm -hmm. Seen last night at the Waldorf, society leader Millicent Forbes and Dr. Leonard Gillespie of the staff of Player General. Does this mean wedding bells? Huh, and here's another. New romantic duo, Millicent Forbes and <laughs> well, Leonard... Well, it's not my affair. Take them down to Dr. Gillespie's office. He told me to mind my own business last night, and I'm minding it. Jimmy, 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 I need your help. Did you see the papers? It's... 
Oh, I, I see you, you've got them. Say, I have a book here I've been meaning to send down to your office. Huh? It's called uh, What Every Young Bridegroom Should Know. Ah. Just off the press, quite good, as a matter of fact. Very informative. Ah, oh, now, Jimmy, you know very well. Oh, the nurses are taking up a collection to buy you a wedding present. I don't want a wedding present. Well, I must say that's very ungrateful of oh, you. I am not getting married. That isn't what the papers say. No. Jimmy, I need help. You told me to take care of my life, and you take care of yours. Well, that was last night. That was last night. I didn't know I was in trouble last night. I can't forgive and forget so easily. I was deeply wounded, after all. Just because love has at last come to you, that doesn't give you any right to turn on your old friend. Ah, love has not come to me. It's getting a little late for denials, isn't it? Uh. Hello. Yes, he is. Send him right down here. There's a reporter on his way down from your office. Wants a picture of the bridegroom. Ah, oh, now, this has gone far enough. Why did you have him sent down here? You can't run away from things, you know. Uh, when you get involved with an heiress, you have to be prepared to face uh, her public. Jimmy killed her. I'd like to chain you to an anthill. Well, I'm going back to work. I'm sure we all hope you'll be very happy, Dr. Oh, Gillespie. Molly. Come in. Dr. Gillespie? Uh, Dr. Gillespie is no more. He just passed on into the great beyond. What? <laughs> Don't let him kid you. This is Dr. Gillespie. Oh. I'm Dr. Kildare. How do you do? And how do you do, Dr. <laughs> Gillespie? I'm from the New York Globe. I wanted to get a statement from you about your marriage. Oh, I'm not getting... Oh, well, my goodness, here you all are. My gracious, I've been hunting all over the hospital for you. Uh, good morning, Leonard, dear. <laughs> oh, Dr. Kildare, how nice to see you. Uh, hello, Millicent. Good morning, Miss Forbes. May I present Mr., uh, Mr... Gordon Arkley of the Globe. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Arkley? I'm so happy to meet you. How do you do? I just came over to see if I could get a statement from Dr. Gillespie on your wedding plans, Miss Forbes. Wedding plans, dear me. <laughs> Dr. Gillespie and I are just good friends. Why, we haven't even discussed wedding plans. No. Yet. Oh. Uh, you seem to have stumbled on something rather prematurely, Mr. Arkley. The kill there. My goodness, yes. <laughs> uh, well, I'm all checked into the hospital, Lenny. You are? Oh, are you entering the hospital, Miss Forbes? Oh, it's just for a routine checkup. I see. How's your cold? Why, it seems to be all gone. Lenny cured it. Well, I'll see you in a little while. Uh, may I walk down the hall with you, Miss Forbes? Why, well, yes, of course. Uh, you're a lucky man, Dr. Gillespie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, see here, Jimmy Kildare. Stop that laughing now. This is serious. I feel like I'm up to my chin in a barrel of molasses. Yes, yeah, tell me more, Lenny. Lenny? No, no, no. I, I'm not going to marry that woman. Oh, don't tell me. Tell her. Tell the newspapers. Tell Dr. Carew. Hey, did you ever hear of a breach of promise suit? How can I breach what I never promised? Are you sure you made no promise? Ah, oh, Jimmy, now. I am in trouble. Trouble. <laughs> I need help. Not you. You're the man that can take care of himself. Ah, oh, no man can take care of himself, Jimmy. No man on earth when a woman's around. What am I going to do? I can think of just one way. But why should I bore you with the details? I'm sure you've figured a way out by now yourself. I'm sorry I said I could take care of myself. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I told you to mind your own business. I'm sorry. I am sorry! What do you want, my arm or my head, my leg? Name it. You can have anything you want. It's yours. Only get me out of this. All right. As long as you're sorry, I'll try, Lenny. No. I'll try. <laughs> Dr. Kildare. Yes. Miss Forbes, Dr. Gillespie has asked me to conduct your checkup. He feels that because of all the gossip and publicity that it might be less embarrassing for you if I took care of you. Oh? Why, well, that's very thoughtful of him. Yes, well, he's a very thoughtful man. As a matter of fact, I'm glad of the opportunity to have a little talk with you. I don't know how serious your romance with Dr. Gillespie is just now. Well, one never knows, does one? But I think a woman like you could bring a lot into his life. Uh -huh. You do? Yes, I do. Mm. I think you have the understanding it takes to be the wife of a doctor. Understanding? Yes, I'm sure that night after night, while you sit alone, waiting for him to come home, you will understand. 
You'll be patient and, and silent in the face of loneliness. Well, I, I, I try to be. And when he does come in, tired and cross, without the strength to speak even one civil word to you, I'm, I'm sure you'll understand and be even kinder to him. Well, I... Uh... And if, heaven forbid, in the heat of exasperation, and a doctor experiences many exasperations and frustrations during the course of a day, if, as I say, the result of these, he should even strike you, I, I know you're the kind of a woman who will understand even that and turn the other cheek. Uh, 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 did, did you say... Strike me, Dr. Kildare? Well, he has been known to be quite violent around the hospital, but he's always very sorry about it the next day. He needs understanding, you see, and compassion and devotion. Uh, yes, but I... And uh... he'll be living at home with you, of course, so naturally you'll have to take care of him, see that he takes his pills in the morning. There are 11 of them. You mustn't let him skip even one. Uh, 11 pills? Yes, two for his liver, two for his heart, two for his blood pressure, and two are vitamins. Um, what are the other three... Well, I I think he had better explain the other three to you. Then he must have a rub down before you let him get out of bed. A rub down? For his circulation. And also he has to wear red flannels and a nightcap until May 15th, unless the weather turns hot earlier. And in June, he can go without his vest. And yes, one other thing. Uh, Dr. Kildare, would you mind? I'd like very much to talk to Dr. Gillespie. You won't tell him what I told you? He becomes quite violent if he thinks people are discussing him. Oh, I'm sure that I'll be able to find protection from his violence if he should become violent in this great hospital. Oh, uh, but you may remain present if you care to, Dr. Kildare. Um, will you send for him, please? Well, yes, Miss Forbes, of course I will, if you insist. Oh, I'm afraid it is quite necessary. <laughs> Dr. Gillespie, I am a woman and you are a man. Now, we can be frank with one another. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course, Millicent. Well, there seems to have been some sort of misunderstanding afloat about us. Oh. <laughs> People seem to have the ridiculous idea that we're engaged. Yes, 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 yes. There does seem to be some such idea around. Uh, Dr. Kildare has told me all about you. Oh. He has, huh? Yes, I told her uh, that. Please, uh, Dr. Kildare, I could put up with the 11 pills, the rub-downs, and even the times when you would strike me. When I'd what? Uh, well, you see, Dr. Gillespie, I, I uh, explained please, that... Please, Dr. Kildare, but I am afraid I could never, never, never feel romantically about a man who wore red flannels and a nightcap. Why, I mm -hmm. never... It's no use denying it, Dr. Gillespie. I have already told Millicent the truth. Oh, you have, have you? Oh, I, I must be honest with you. Mm. This has all been a mistake. One evening's delightful illusion gone with the coming of morning. Mm. But I do hope we'll always be friends, Dr. Gillespie. Yes, I hope we shall always be friends, too, oh. Miss Forbes. You are a sweet, sweet man. Yeah. Oh, dear, it's too bad. <laughs> But c'est la vie, c'est la vie. And now, if you don't mind, I'm rather tired and I, I should like to rest. Yes, 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 to be sure. Yes, yes, of course. Come on, Jimmy. I'll be in to complete your checkup in the morning, Miss yeah. Forbes. Did you have to destroy all my glamour to save me? All your glamour? Well, I'll be hanged. Ah, a man doesn't like to lose all his glamour with a pretty woman, you know? I, I, I'd like to tell her that I don't... Be careful, Doctor. You'll be right back in the fire again, and I haven't got a prescription to save your life a second time. I accept your decision, Dr. Gilday. Glamour be hanged. Liberty is the important thing. <laughs> Liberty. <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare.
now, once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, it says here in the paper that Millicent Forbes has a new flame. Anyone we know? No. Molly, did you actually think I'd marry Millicent Forbes? Well, I knew she was going to marry you if you didn't step awfully fast. Were you jealous? Not a bit. Ah, you were too. Well, I think you two can fight this out better without me. I have some patients that require a little attention. Hmm. You think you're safe now, Dr. Gillespie? I can leave you alone? Huh. You leave him alone with me at your own risk. Hmm. I'll figure out a way to break down his resistance to me yet. Doggone, I never realized how irresistible I am to women. <laughs> ah. Why don't you give in and marry Molly, Dr. Gillespie? I wouldn't want to break up a beautiful friendship, Kildare. Uh, a beautiful friendship. <laughs> You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Gene Holloway and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Eleanor Audley, Isabel Randolph, and Eddie Fields. Dick Joy speaking. (laughs) 